Hare Krishna, good morning to devotees from Sri Jagannath Puri Dham. These are our morning adventures in Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, this is our 46th session that we've called uh, Meeting in Kurukshetra. For those of you who are new to that, you might want to go back and look at the uh, previous dis talks we've had. And we've spoke elaborately about how Krishna left Vrindavan, what happened in Mathura, why Krishna didn't return from Mathura to Vrindavan, or actually how Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says he really did return to Vrindavan from Mathura, what, what that means, and how uh, Krishna first met Uddhava, and what Krishna told Uddhava, the message that he gave, and how he spoke to Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. Those are some of our previous sessions. We'll be going on, we're starting in a few, probably in the next session with the Brahma Ragit, chapter uh, 47 of the 10th canto and from there we'll uh, later go to Dwarka and finally ending up in Kurukshetra and after Kurukshetra we'll come to Jagannath Puri. So uh, when we speak about this meeting in Kurukshetra there's many many things which lead up to it. I just started it just now. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so before we start we'll uh, begin with a few prayers. If anybody's watching here, please uh, write some comments in, and I'd, I'd like the devotees to share some reflections, both with devotees who are here and elsewhere, what you're walking away with today. Gauraganya gana gauta galoru haram Gauranga gauta tama gopira kopa briksham Gopala gada rati dam yati singha gora Govinda deshi kavaram satatam namami Uttama adama kichuna bachira Jachi adile kakola Kahe premananda emona goranga ridoya dadi abola Bhaja Goranga Kaha Goranga Laha Goranga Ranamare Jejana Goranga Bhaja Sehoya Mara Pranare Narayanam Namaskritam Naram Shaivanarotamam Devim Sarasvatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Hudirayat Vedi Ramayane Shaiva Purani Bharate Tata Adavante Chamadye Chahari Shaiva Tragihate Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langayate Girim Yet Kripa Tamaham Vande Shigurum Dinataranam Paramananda Madhavam Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya so, for anybody who just joined, good morning from Sri Jagannath Puri Dham. This is our uh, morning discussions on Srimad Bhagavatam. We're speaking, we're just finishing chapter, uh, actually chapter 46, I think it is, of the 10th canto, yeah. And we'll be going on to chapter 47 in our next session. I said something a little wrong just a minute ago. So, uh, this is part of, this is part 46 of our discussion meeting in Kurukshetra, we're laying the foundation because if we're going to speak about the meeting in Kurukshetra, we have to speak about all the events that lead up to it. We're very fortunate today because we have some very special devotees with us, including Parunda Acharya Prabhu, who just came in, yeah. and Tukaram Prabhu and Jagadatma Prabhu. So we'd like, we'd like to start meeting with devotees at least once a week here in uh, Pori and our ashram. So in our last session, to, for devotees to catch up a little bit, we spoke about a very interesting thing from Jiva Goswami's Lagu Vaishnav Toshini from this particular chapter. And a question arises, why is there no mention of Uddhava giving any message to the cows or the cowherd boys? Krishna doesn't care about them? 
Why, why is there no mention? There's no mention, Jiva Goswami notes, in, in this chapter about any message that Krishna gave through Uddhava. In Gopal Champu, there's messages that he gave for the cows also and for the cowherd boys, but there's no message about Uddhava carrying that. Why is that? We spoke something elaborately about that in our last session, but just to review a little bit and touch on that again now. Jiva Goswami describes how in Braj there's three types of prem. Utkanta Pradhan, Vishramba Pradhan, and Viveka Sunya Pradhan. Mm -hmm. uh, Viveka Sunya means prema that has no discrimination. And that's the cows. Mm -hmm. And those cows, they, they see Krishna through his spurti, and they're fully satisfied that Krishna's there. The cowherd boys, they have Vishramba Pradhan Prema, and that's prema, which has some predominance of familiarity, it's dishramba. And their type of prema, the cowherd boys, they also believe when they see Krishna's spurti there, they feel so much separation and Krishna manifests before them, they feel that that's real. And Jiva Goswami further comments that those boys, they believe what Krishna said. Krishna said he's going to return. He said ayasya when he left Vrindavan. And definitely he's going to do that because we're Vishramba, we're so close with him, we can't imagine how he wouldn't return. But the love of Nanda and Yashoda, the love of the Gopikas of Braj, is Utkanta Pradhan. And Utkanta, for those of you who don't know the word Utkanta, mean, Kanta means the neck. And Utkanta means, means when you're choking, when something's very, very intense feeling. And that's Prema with the predominance of longing. And even when Krishna says, I'm going to return, they don't really believe it. When they see a spurti of Krishna, when they personally see Krishna, sometimes they think Krishna is not actually there. They, they don't, their, their love is so intense. And so it was for them that Uddhava came with this message. Now, we'd like to go on today to text number 47 and I think 48, maybe 49 in this uh, chapter. We hope to finish this chapter today. Mm -hmm. So Sukadev Goswami uh, described in our last session about uh, how at the end of the day, the gopikas had risen and they began churning the uh, makan and uh, they began doing kirtan for Krishna. And Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur, again, we're just looking back in our previous session, he commented, he said that this indicates the chamber of union in Vrindavan. And Vishnu says something very extraordinary in his commentaries in this chapter. He says there's two chambers in Vrindavan. And this is a very important topic for our discussion because, again, we're laying the foundation now for the meeting in Kurukshetra, which ultimately we're going to be speaking about Jagannath Puri. And uh, it's a very important consideration that Vishnu is giving that in Vrindavan, there's two chambers. There's a chamber of union and a chamber of separation. And Vrindavana paritjiga padikam nagachati. Krishna never takes one step out of Vrindavan. And according to Vishwanath, it's, it's something we discussed elaborately in some previous sessions, when Nanda Maharaj returned to Vrindavan, Krishna manifested two forms of Nanda Maharaj, two chariots, two sets of boys, and one set returned alone, and Krishna and Balaram stayed in Mathura. But with another set of Nanda Maharaj and the boys, Krishna and Balaram returned to Vrindavan. And there was a chamber of union, and he gives different evidences to support that, how when Uddhava first arrived in Vrindavan, he saw that everyone was so happy, and the deer and the animals were dancing and things, and he said, this is a chamber of union. And Krishna's there, and that's why they're happy. A similar discussion is given in the Narottam Vilas of Narahari Chakravarti Thakur. When Narottam Das Thakur arrived in Navadweep, the first vision he had of Navadweep was everyone doing kirtan and ecstasy and so much happiness and wow, this is really amazing. And then he went a little further and all of a sudden everything was quiet and no one was coming. He just saw the few people he saw, they were just crying and they were dying in separation from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who had left. 
So that Nabadweep is a manifestation of Vrindavan, and as we'll discuss later, Jagannath Puri is also a manifestation of Vrindavan. And there are two chambers within each of these parts of Vrindavan, a chamber of union and a chamber of separation. In text 46 of this uh, same chapter we're going over today, uh, we heard from Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur in our last session how the gopis were so happy and they're waking up early in the morning and they're doing kirtan and singing and churning yogurt and Vishnu says this is the chamber of union. And now we're going to hear something more about the chamber of separation. So this is text 47. Bhagavat yudite surye nandodhwari vajokasha drisva ratam satang kombam kashyayam iticha bruvan. And the verse describes that when that personality is known as Bhagavati, who is Suryade, the sun, Udite, when he had risen, hmm? at that time the people of Braj, hmm? those Brajokasa, the residents of Vrindavan, Jishvavratam Satankombam, they saw this golden chariot sitting there and they became very, very curious. Hmm? They said, Kashayam, who, who does this belong to? Hmm? Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur in Sarita Darshani, he says that Braja Okasa, the residents of Vrindavan, refers here in particular to the gopis, the Braj Gopikas, who were feeling so much separation when they saw the chariot of Uddhava. And Vishwanath here he says, now this indicates the manifestation of Braj in separation from Krishna's again manifesting. Mm-hmm. Jiva Goswami in his Lagu Vaishnav Toshani, he comments that why here is the word the, the Surya Dev called Bhagavati, Bhagavat Udite Surya? Huh? Why is he called Bhagavati? Because he has the power to destroy darkness. So this is also, as we mentioned before in our previous session, there's some symbolism given here. We spoke about a lot of symbolism in our last session. Uh, when Uddhava is arriving in Vrindavan, it's like the rising of the sun. And now that they're able to see Krishna through Uddhava. So today we're going to speak about that initial meeting and about secrecy and why that secrecy is so important in Krishna consciousness. Jiva goes on to explain that uh, the son here is called Bhagavati because he has a power to destroy darkness or he uh, is a worshipful uh, traditional object with which to worship the Lord. And he says that the sun is also praised because the people of Brudge were satisfied with its rising because uh, there would be some happiness on gaining news about Krishna. Sanatana Goswami in Brihad Vaishnav Toshani uh, says that the sun here is called Bhagavat Titi because he's a residence of the Lord. He gives another explanation who's residing there. Jiva Goswami describes a little bit of this in Gopal Champu. We'll be looking in Gopal Champu and also in a book called Brindavan Lilamrita by Navakishore Goswami, Nandakishore Goswami, excuse me, who was one uh, Vaishnava Nichananda Paribar wrote a wonderful book in Bengali, Paya, uh, about uh, Braj Lila. Anyway, Jiva Goswami in Gopal Champu, he describes what happened when the gopis saw Uddhava's chariot. Uddhavashivatam Drishva. When they saw the chariot, Drishva, they saw the chariot of Uddhava. Akra Ram Rama Sasankire Churnaina Dugda Jiva Anam Bhavatad Brahmadam Dadi. That uh, the word Churnaina, Churnaina means lime, or when uh, lime means something very caustic. If you put lye on you, your body starts burning up. So when they saw that chariot of Uddhava, Akrura Rama Sasankiri, they thought, oh my God, Akrura has come back. <laughs> in the same way, Jiva Goswami says in a very poetic way that someone whose tongue is burned by caustic lime, they'll think that, that yogurt is also that lime. Mm-hmm. It's not. Dugda Jiva Num. Jiva means the tongue. Dagda refers to yogurt. So someone who's been burned by something, then when they have something which is not actually burning, but it's a little... 
Yeah, th then they, they feel that thing is the same. When you mix wine, <laughs> Jagadat Mabu is pointing out that, that when you mix lime, it's thick and it, and it looks something like yogurt, but you don't want to eat it. <laughs> You'll die. In the next verse, uh, Sukadev Goswami describes Akrura Agata Kimva Ya Kamsashyarta Sadaka. <laughs> it describes, oh, Akrura. Who is Akrura? He's Kamsarta Sadak. <laughs> he's that, that sadhak of kangsa who's, who's working to achieve the goal, kangsyarta, the artha, the desire of kangsa. That's a kura. He's a kangsyarta sadhak. Yena nito madhu purim krishna kamala lochana. Maybe a kura has come back because kangsa has some further desire. He's not just satisfied with taking krishna to matura. Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur in his Sartha Darshani and Jiva Goswami in Lagu Vaishnav Toshi, they, they say some very beautiful things here. He said that the gopis, they're speaking in a very angry way. And we're going to be hearing something about this wonderful Chamatkar Bhava, the gopis, in the next chapter, which is known also as Man, or loving sulkiness. And how that man is very extraordinary and how it brings so much pleasure to Krishna. Srila Prabhupada spoke about that in one lecture in, uh, let's see if I can find it here. We printed something about it in our magazine about uh, Krishna's sannyas, uh, uh, the secret of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's sannyas leela. Srila Prabhupada in uh, Bombay, he was giving one lecture and ah, here it is. He said, Krishna wants to be controlled by Yashoda Moi. Krishna wants to be controlled by Yashoda. Krishna wants to be defeated by his friends. Krishna wants to be refused Radharani's darshan. Krishna wants that. Huh? When Radharani is angry, she refuses to allow Krishna to see her. She orders the Sakis, don't allow Krishna to come here. Then Krishna flatters the Sakis and says, kindly let me go. And the gopis say, no, sir, we cannot, you cannot go. And Prabhupada said, this is Krishna. So this is Krishna. Krishna gets some wonderful pleasure from those loving, uh, sulky words of the gopis. So Vishwanath and Sartha Darshani here, he's describing that the gopis are speaking in this angry kind of way, and they're saying that maybe this occurred who took Krishna to Mathura to fulfill the purposes of Kangsa, now he's come to Braj for some other purpose. Jiva Goswami in Lagu Vaishnav Toshani, he says that Kangsa can be called Madhu. Uh -huh. Here in this verse, the phrase Madhu Purim has been given. Madhupuram referring to the city of, of Mathura because there was a demon there before. His name was Madhu. And so the gopis are saying that this is an appropriate name for this city. It's a place of a demon. This is the demon of separation. And Akura has taken it to, to, to Krishna, to, to Madhupuri. And they're saying indirectly it's not proper. It was inappropriate for Akura to take our Kamala Lochan Krishna, our lotus-eyed Krishna, who's so gentle to such a demoniac place. And by speaking like this, Jiva says that the gopis, they're revealing the extreme pain in their hearts when they're remembering Krishna's special qualities. Uh -huh. And they're saying indirectly here that it's improper, it was terrible for Krur to take Krishna away from Vrindavan, but it's even worse that they took him, that he took him to Madhupuri, this demoniac place. Nanda Kishore Goswami in Vrindavan Lilamrita, uh, I left the fan on here, it's okay, I tested it. it. It's a little noisy, but not too bad. I hope the devotees can hear us okay. Sometimes we have problems with our microphone. Let me just check it. Yeah, it's working okay right now. Usually when I start playing the keyboard here, for some reason the, the sound goes down. We'll see what happens. So Nandiki Goswami describes what happened when Uddhava first saw the gopis. Hmm? He's heard the gopis. 
That was his first uh, first way he met the gopis. Before he saw them, he heard them doing kirtan, and he heard the sound of that yogurt being churned. And as we spoke, there's some symbolism there because that, that churning means a churning of the heart, which produces ghee, which is the inner feelings of the heart. So Nandiki Goswami sings, Bujiye Sabha Gopi Krishna Priya Hoy Nahe Ki Darshana Matra Sukha Upajoy hmm? When Uddhava saw the Gopikas, immediately he thought, Oh, Buji A, he could understand Buji. A Sabha Gopi, these Gopis, Krishna Priya Hoy, these must be very, very dear persons to Krishna. He could understand that. Why is that? Nahi ki darshana matra sukha upajaya because I feel happiness just when I see them. That's the nature of the Vaishnav. When we see an exalted Vaishnav, we feel happy just when we see them. Hmm? And uh, Uddhava goes on to describe. Eta bhavi tino aila tasabha sakshate Krishna Krishna nana sputa kahite kahite so then what did Uddhava do? Huh? He's thinking like this. Huh? He's thinking like this inside himself. And in Tasabo Sakshate, he came directly before the gopis. And what did he do? What did Hanuman do when he came to give a message to Sita in the Ashok Grove? He didn't just walk in and say, Yo, here I am. <laughs> I'm Ramachandra's messenger. Because Sita would have immediately, which she did actually, think that this is some demon or something. But the first thing that Hanuman did, very softly, he said, Ram, Ram, Ram. He started calling out the name of Ramachandra. And Sita, when she heard that, oh, oh, what is that? And so this is a way that we carry the message from Guru. This is a way that we carry the message from Krishna to the devotees. This is a message in this section we want to try to speak something about today. How to carry that message. How to deliver that message. And the first thing is, we chant Krishna's name. Srila Prabhupada did like this. When he went to America, he sat down in Tompkins Square Park. He didn't sit down and start giving a lecture on the 10th canto of the Bhagavatam and telling the, the hippies there that, you know, God is a blue boy and he likes cows. <laughs> <laughs> and he has all these girlfriends. They couldn't understand anything. You know? He just sat down and just chanted. And Prabhupada is Krishna's messenger. He's like Uddhava. He's coming with this message. So the way that message is brought First of all is by giving Krishna's name because that awakens the soul. And when we start to hear Krishna's name from the lips of that pure devotee, then we become receptive for the message. And so he described Krishna, Krishna, nana sputa kahite kahite. Very softly, Uddhava was speaking Krishna's name to give a message to the gopis. Two messages are given here. This is something private that I have for you. Therefore, he's speaking in a soft way. And there's a message coming from Krishna. This is especially for you. Previously, I was speaking to Nanda and Yashoda. Huh? And in uh, Mathura meets Vrindavan, we spoke about that, uh, how our Guru Maharaj speaks, and from different commentaries. So then the 49th verse, the final verse of this chapter, we'll conclude with today and try to offer some comments on it. The gopi's response when they saw Uddhava and they saw that chariot. It, now remember in the previous verse, they were thinking that Akura uh, Agatam mm -hmm. this Akura, he's come back. Uh, he's come Syarta Sadik. <laughs> he's the servant of Kangsa coming to, to, to serve Kangsa's purpose. And then what did the gopis think after that? Kim Sadish Yat Yasma Beer Bartu. Pritashanishkritim tatastrinim vedantinam udavoghat kritanika. So they were thinking uh -huh, that uh, sadishyasti, what is he going to accomplish? Kim sadishyasti, uh, what does he want with us? Has he come for his master? Has he come for the purpose? He's not satisfied. 
He's taken Krishna away from Vrindavan. He's killed all of us. We're all dead. And then we heard something about how Kangsa was, was somehow killed in Mathura. And the gopis, as our acharyas are going to comment, uh, that somehow he was killed. They're not thinking directly that Krishna did that. Hmm? That's a little bit of Aishvarya. They're just thinking somehow that terrible Kangsa was killed. And now maybe the Sakura is coming because he wants to do some some ceremony, Niskritam, some funeral ritual, and he's going to offer our flesh because now we're dead bodies. So he's come here to offer our dead flesh in the fire for his master, Kangsa. It's not enough that he's taken Krishna away and that he's killed all the residents of Vrindavan. Now he's returned to take our dead bodies so he can offer their flesh in the fire, the funeral pyre of Kangsa. This is what the gopis are speaking. This is madness and ecstatic love. Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur in his Artha Darshani commentary, he says, he, he explains this, that they're thinking that why is Akura come again now that Kangsa has been killed? Uh -huh. Maybe he's going to do these funeral rites for Kangsa by using our flesh as an offering. Jiva Goswami and Lagu Vaishnav Toshini says that the gopis were thinking that although he took Krishna to satisfy Kangsa's purpose, Akura, by chance somehow, Kangsa was killed, and Akura kept Krishna and Mathur for his own purposes, but now he has come for some other purpose. He wants to use our bodies as offerings of atonement for Kangsa. And then Jiva Goswami goes on to explain the topic which I want to focus on today, which we'll hear a little bit, we'll be looking into the next chapter and looking in a few different places in Shastra, that he describes that at that time, because the verse goes on to describe that Uddhava Ghat Kritanika, that Uddhava appeared there. Mm -hmm. Anika, he, he performed his Anika, sometimes people, they, they call the chanting Gayatri Mantra, their Anik. Mm -hmm. he, he's performing his early morning religious duties, so they translate that. That Uddhava came and immediately what did Uddhava do? He began to search out a secret place where they could have this discussion. And Jiva Goswami describes that although the gopikas, the Braj gopikas, their houses were spread all over Braj, which is a 64 krosha area, huge area. One krosha, I think, is eight miles. So 64 crochets, 64 times 8, you can do the math. I'm not a big mathematician. 84. Uh -huh. Very, very big area. So uh, the gopis were all coming there. And Jiva Goswami looks back in the 42nd chapter of the 10th canto, where Krishna, when he spoke to Kubja, and how Kubja had invited him to her home, Krishna at that time, he described the nature of the bridge bhasis. Agrihanam na. That for us, we have no homes. That's the nature of the bridge bhasis. And we spoke something also in some of our earlier sessions about how the gopis of Vrindavan, uh, how they were saying that uh, for the pleasure of Krishna, our homes became the forest, and the forest became our homes. That's the nature of Vrindavan. Their homes are homes if it serves Krishna. And we heard something about how when Mother Yashoda came out of the house with Krishna in her hand, and all the residents of Vrindavan were gathered out there because Akura had come. And throughout the night, Akura spoke to Nanda Maharaj to convince him and how Nanda Maharaj, in the morning then, he told Akura, you wait out here, I have to go speak to Krishna's mother. And he went in and he saw something was different that morning. Previously, every morning, Krishna was sitting on Mother Yashoda's lap, but this morning, Krishna was nowhere to be found. And uh, Nanda Maharaj could understand that Mother Yashoda had hidden Krishna somewhere. And Yashoda was just sitting there and crying. And then Nanda Maharaj had a very, very difficult task to try to convince Yashoda to allow Krishna to leave Vrindavan. And Yashoda, it's a long, complicated discussion they had, but Yashoda was simple. 
and she believed her husband. She believed that a courier was saintly and believed their words that they, they were very soon going to bring Krishna back. And so finally she came out of the house with Krishna in her hand. And when the gopis, Sanatana Goswami and Brihad Bhagavatamrita says that when the gopis saw this, all of a sudden the sky cracked from the sound of their wailing when, and crying when they saw Yashoda coming out of the house with Krishna in her hand and a crew there waiting. And at that time they, they began to criticize Yashoda. Inconceivable thing. The gopis would never criticize Yashoda. But they, they called her Murka, you're a fool, what are you doing? You're taking your son and you're putting him in the hand of this tiger, Kongsa. And now your, your house, which is the most wonderful place, is going to become like the empty forest. So Krishna spoke like this to Kubja. Agrihanam na. This is the bridge basis. We have no homes. Especially in separation from Krishna. Uh -huh. So... Uh, Later on, it'll be described how they offered Uddhava a seat. Rahasya pricham upavishta asane vigaya sandesha haram rama pate. There, in that place, which is Rahasi, a very secluded, secret kind of place, a pricham, they inquired. The same word, Rahasi, is used in the Skanda Purana to describe. Jagannath Puri. Uh -huh. Rahasyamitam paramam vishnu stanam anutamam. The Skanda Purana describes that this place is Rahasi. And this is significant uh, because, as we'll hear later in Chaitanya Charitamrita in the next chapter, the feelings that the gopis were experiencing during this Brahma Ragit when they were speaking, when they were hearing from Uddhava and they were having this conversation in madness with this bumblebee, those are the exact same feelings which take place in Jagannath Puri in the Gambira. So this word Rahasi is used both in the 10th canto to describe uh, the meeting of Uddhava with the gopis in, in the Brahma Ragit and it's used to describe Jagannath Puri Dham. We're just looking a little bit ahead in our discussion now. So Rahasi Aprichan, Aprichan, they inquired from Uddhava in a very confidential way. They offered him a nice seat because this is what you do when someone's come with the message of God. We offer a seat, an asan, to the, the speaker. And that seat doesn't belong to him. It's a Vyasasan. It's a seat of Vyas. Not because, not that the speaker is such a special person, but the seat is being offered because not who he is, but because what he's going to say, because the message that he's come to give. And so similarly, the gopis, the Braj gopis, because they're offering this seat because Sunday Shamharam, this messenger has now come. <clears throat> Uddhava later on, he comments uh, in this, 47th chapter, which we're going to be entering into in the 28th verse, he says, Aham bartu rahaskara. Uh -huh. Again, this word rahasya is used by him here. He says that I work for my master. Uh -huh. Bartu is my master, and I do this kara, this kartu, this work for him in a confidential, solitary place. Uh -huh. And uh, Jiva Goswami says, they met in that solitary place. Because such a meeting could not take place on any road in Brudge or in any house in Brudge. Even in Vrindavan, this meeting can't take place in anyone's house. And therefore, it takes place in the spot known as Udavakeri, which is just there near to Nandagaon. Very, very special place. Rupa Goswami has written two books, uh, Udava Sandesh. And Hangsadut, our Gurmar sometimes comments on them. In the tenth verse of Hangsadut, the Hangsadut is a book which describes the feelings of separation from of Shimati Radharani after Krishna left Vrindavan, and how Lita was thinking, what can we do to console our Radhika? And then she saw Hangsa, a swan. And Lalita gave a message to that Hangsa. And the first thing that she told that Hangsa is very relevant for our discussion today. She said, Taritam Sandesham. Uh -huh. You take 
this sandesh, this letter. Uh -huh. But how do you take it? Taditam sandesham swamanasi. Swamanasi. And I want to look back at this word manasi. The word manasi has many, many different meanings. And I want to gloss over eight different meanings of the word manasi and the significance why the gopis, why Lalita is telling this to the swan, that you have you take this message to Krishna. And this is the same kind of spirit that we see spoken of now with Uddhava, how he has this rahasya, uh, uh, this uh, rahasya sandesh, this very confidential message. Uh, see, Lalita says, Taditam sandesham swamanasi samadaya nikilam. The samadha, you take, you place this message, you put this message in your manasi, in your mind or your heart. Bhavam shipram tasya shravana padavim sangamayati. And you carry this uh -huh, message, you put it on the pathway of Krishna's ears. You put this message in your heart and you take it and put it in the pathway of his ears. So this is the same type of message and this confidential message is something which has to first come to the heart now let's look back on some different meanings I, I looked in the Sanskrit dictionary today Motor Williams gives many different meanings to the word manas uh, the general meaning is the mind of the heart or manas also means to perceive or understand something so the gopis here are telling the swan and just as Uddhava has been told by Krishna, you take this message, and this has to be something which you've understood. It's not just something which a message that you verbally carry, like sometimes the postman carries something in a parrot-like way. He just repeats. But this message is a message of love. And it won't be appropriate for you to take this message and speak it in a parrot-like way. So that's the first meaning of manas it means the mind of the heart you have to carry it in the heart you have to perceive you have to understand it a second meaning of manas is manas is the instrument uh, by which objects of the senses affect the soul interesting meaning given by by uh, Munir Williams uh, manas is that instrument uh -huh. It's the mind of the heart, it's perception, by which objects of the senses affect the soul. And therefore, Krishna says, Mamana Bhava Madhbhakta, you ply your mind, you think of me. We have to give our mind to Krishna. Another meaning of manas is to reflect or contemplate on something. You should think about it. This message, you're not just, just repeating it like a parrot, but you should think deeply. Previously in one of our sessions, we spoke something about the message that Krishna gave to the cowherd boys, he gave uh, to the, the wives of the Yagya Brahmins. And Krishna told the boys, Jiva Goswami and Gopal Champu says, don't tell them I'm hungry, because they're gonna freak out. They, they, can't cope, they can't cope with that. The boys went there and they said, hey, Krishna sent us, which Krishna told them to do. And as soon as they said that, those Yagya Brahman, those ladies, they became stunned in ecstasy because that's Guru. Guru has come from Krishna. The boys are Krishna's messenger. They became stunned in ecstasy. And then the boys did an interesting thing according to Jiva Goswami. They disobeyed Krishna's order. Krishna told them, don't tell him we're hungry. The, the boys went there. Those ladies became stunned in ecstasy. And then the boys, you know, Krishna and Balaram, they sent it, and they're really hungry. And Jiva Goswami doesn't explain that, but why? Because they're true messengers. Because they're doing this manas. They're carrying it in their heart and they're contemplating on it. They understand the purpose of Krishna. Why did they say that Krishna was hungry? Because they wanted to wake them up. They saw that they were stunned in ecstasy and they knew because they're very deep antaranga devotees. They're very close with Krishna. They understood that I have to wake them up. And the way to wake them up is to tell them Krishna's hungry. And then the, those ladies, oh my gosh, what are we doing standing here? Krishna's hungry. We have to feed him right away. So this is how to carry the message. It's not enough. In, in America, there's a bumper sticker I once saw. Jesus said it. I believe it. 
and that settles it. <laughs> or sometimes we say, excuse me, how do we do this? Thank you. Prabhupada said it, I believe it, and that settles it. I don't. Uh, <laughs> Prabhupada said, check it out in the com comments. Uh, Prabhuji, if you do it up like that, then it makes a circle behind me on the glass. It needs to, it needs to go right about like that. <laughs> I, I think it's okay being down here. Thanks. Thank you very much. Let me just look at it. Yeah, that's fine. So it's not enough. We have to reflect on this message. It's not just that we're collecting some information and then we go out and we speak that information to some person. That's not carrying the message of guru. Uh -huh. Another meaning of manas is to breathe or the living soul. In other words, this is a message which you have to live. This is a message which is your breath. Another meaning of manas, interesting meaning according to uh, Monia Williams, is mental pain or agony. That you should understand. It means to be empathetic, something we spoke quite a bit about in some of our previous sessions, how the bridge bossies, their conversations are always empathetic. They're always understanding the heart of the other person, empathy. Mm -hmm. Another meaning of manas, according to Mona Williams, is Cupid, the god of love. And so <laughs> you have to carry this message of love. Huh? Another meaning is love or passion. And of eighth meaning, and there was, I just, I don't know, a dozen different meanings. I just picked out a few I found significant. Another meaning of manas is a hint. Mm -hmm. Or something, a wish of the heart, which is expressed indirectly. That's manas. Mm -hmm. Or as we often comment, parokshavat. Paroksha, uh, Parokshavadam Rishaya, Paroksha Mama Chapriyam. Krishna says to Uddhava in the 11th canto, the Bhagavatam, that this Parokshavad, this is how the Rishis in Shastra, how they, they carry things it's in an indirect way. And this Parokshavad Mama Chapriyam, he says, it's very, very dear to me. I like this Parokshavad. And Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur has spoken elaborately in some of his writings about and this Paroksha and how the language of Vrindavan. So, this is a very, very important thing. In the Gita, in the fourth chapter of the Gita, Krishna tells Arjun, Saeva yamaya tedya yoga prokta paratana bhakta sime sakha chiti rahasyam etaduttamam. Because you're my friend, I'm speaking this thing to you, which is a secret thing. We should understand this. The religionists, the Bahirmukjanas, the external purpose persons, when they carry the message of God, they do it in a very external way. And they think it's just all about information. And when they go out for book distribution, they, they say, Prabhuji, I don't know, what, what should I tell them? And then somebody says, well, you should tell them, um, excuse me, sir, are you, and, and you have a little paper you're reading from, excuse me, sir, are you from here or are you from out of town? And the person says, well, I'm from out of town. Okay, here, you get one of these. We're passing these out today. We're doing a program for our yoga center. Huh? <laughs> That's not Uddhava Sandesh. <laughs> That's not Hansadut. Huh? Huh? This is Manas. And this is something Rahasya. And it's very, very important devotees should understand that. Now, of course, in the beginning, we are mechanical. And what can we do? But by carrying that mechanical, that message, it's such an important message, even in a mechanical way, we attract the attention of Guru and Krishna. And we get their mercy. And then what happens? Then we begin to come to Manas, we begin to reflect. What is the meaning of that message? What, what was the purpose? Why he sent me? What, what did he want to say? And only after reflecting very deeply on that can we come to the proper point of giving it. So usually when we think about Bhagavad Gita, we think about the, the song of God, that's Bhagavad Gita, and it's a song for everybody, and we want everyone to have Bhagavad Gita. But Krishna at the end of the Gita says a very interesting thing to Arjuna. He says, don't do that. He, in the 67th verse, he says, Idam te nada paskaya. 
don't give this message to certain people. Natasha Shushave Vacham, this Vacha, don't give this to someone who's not a Paskaya, not a Paskaya, who's uh, na tapasya. They're not, they can't do any austerity. There should be some austerity. You should have some desire. You should want to hear Krishna Kata. Guru said, it's like your head is on fire. You'll run all the way across the world. You'll follow that sadhu. You'll go early in the morning to Mangalarti because we want to be there for that kirtan. We want to hear this message. As we said, Uddhava, the first thing he said was Krishna, Krishna. So we begin our day with Krishna, Krishna chanting. And then we have this confidential message of Srimad Bhagavatam in our temples, which is not open for the public. So, idam te paskaya, Krishna tells him, nabaktaya. Kadachana. Kadachana means at any time don't speak this to someone who's not a paskai, who's, who's not doesn't have tapasya, who's nabaktaya, who's not a devotee. Don't speak it to them. Not a devotee means what? It means that he's not behaving toward you in a nice It doesn't just mean he has anybody who has tilak on and kunti mala that you can go and speak to them. But it means they're not devoted to the person who's giving the talk also. Otherwise, how can you speak it? Someone who's uh, a who's not doing service. Because Krishna in the Gita, he says that, that to understand this, this knowledge, you have to submit yourself, you have to inquire submissively, and you have to render service. Otherwise, you can't understand this message. Nachamam yo byasuyati. Abhyasuyati means someone who's envious. This is a very difficult thing. Let me just say something very, very straightforward and very frank. In our temples, we have our Bhagavatam class every day, and it's important. This is Srila Prabhupada's instruction. It's one of the most important instructions. But what is the function of that temple? If we don't understand what is the function, the purpose of the temple, we may become disillusioned if we have some other idea that I'm going to come into the temple and everybody's going to be happy and everybody's going to be friends and everything's going to be wonderful. That's not actually the purpose of the temple. The purpose of the temple is for preaching. The purpose of the temple is for training new devotees. The purpose of the temple is to bring a place for the congregation. And so to train those new devotees, we have our Bhagavatam class. But it's not always such an intimate Sangha. Because they're coming there, it's not a hoitaki, it's hoitaki. There's a motivation. If I don't go to class, they won't let me have breakfast in the temple. So I, I got to go to class, and that's why I'm going. And I really don't like this devotee who's speaking, and he doesn't quote any verses, and it's really boring, and, and I'm not into it. That's, uh, that's envy. And you can't understand this message. So this is a confidential message. So Uddhava, he's bringing the gopis to a hidden place. Because someone who's in this, they can't enter into this Sangha. And if we want to go deeper in Krishna consciousness, we should understand. The same word Rahasya, as I mentioned, is used both in speaking about the message that Uddhava gave to the gopis and their, their response. And the same word is used in the Skanda Purana describing Jagannath Puri, which is the place of the Gambira Leela, where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is tasting. Kaviraj Goswami says he's in particular, he's tasting that Brahma Ragit, that message which happened that Uddhava carried. So this word Rahasya is very important. And we see this Rahasya here in Jagannath Puri. We oftentimes comment, that this is the Jagannath Puri University of Braj Prem. It's a university which is opened up by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And in this university, it's a place where we learn how to develop Braj Prem. And Mahaprabhu himself was showing us. And each different Tirtastali in Jagannath Puri is a different class and with a different lesson to teach us how to enter into Braj. It's a long, complicated discussion, very sweet discussion, actually. But the first classroom is a Jagannath Mandir, which represents several things, one of which is it represents organized religion. And sometimes things are really complicated in organized religion. Sometimes it's painful. 
It's so painful that the same person who established the deities of Jagannath Balaji Subhadra in such a yuga, that same Lord Brahma has come now as Haridas Thakur and they won't let him inside the temple. Hey, I established the deities here. Don't you know who I am? He could have said like that, but he didn't say like that. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could have chastised him. If he would have just said one word, Maharaj Prataparudra would have immediately let Haridas Thakur inside. Kanai Kuntia, who was the, the chief priest, the head priest of the Jagannath Mandir. He was a devotee of Mahaprabhu. His house is just there today, very close to the Gambira. He could have told Kanai Kuntia, hey, let Haridas Thakur, let Rupa Sanatan, let them inside. But Mahaprabhu didn't. And Lochandas Thakur and Chaitanya Mangal says that four times a day, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going to the Jagannath Mandir, which indicates to me that as much as we may find it really annoying sometimes, eh, organized religion is important. And God himself supports organized religion. Jagannath supports it. He doesn't, he could come in a dream and tell the pandas, hey, Badmas, you, you, you let him inside. He could do that, but he's not. He's supporting organized religion. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is supporting that. Uh -huh. So in the Bhagavatam, in the eighth canto, Chapter 7, Lord Vishnu tells Aditi, Naitat parasma ekyayam pristyayapi katanchana sarvam sapadyate devi devi guyam susambritam. He speaks about this guyam, guyam atyati pritchati. Uh -huh. Something which is very confidential. Deva guyam, even for the demigods. See, he said to her, I'm telling you this secret thing. Don't reveal this to anyone. Because those things which are confidential, they're successful if they're kept secret. Four times in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells Arjun, you should live alone. We don't talk about that very often, do we? <laughs> Whether we say you should live in the city, we should stay in Bhubaneshwar, we should stay in, in Paris and New York, and you should go out in Harinam every day. But Krishna says, Rahasi, Rahasi stita ekaki. Uh -huh. that a transcendentalist, he says in the 6th chapter of the Gita, should live alone in a secluded place. In the 13th chapter, when he speaks about the different symptoms of knowledge, in verse 11, he gives two different symptoms. Vivikta, desha sevidvam, that you should aspire to live in a solitary place. That means you have a brain. That means you have intelligence. Uh -huh. And aratir, janasangsiti, arati, you have no attachment to Janasangsiti, general people. In the 18th chapter, Krishna says, Vivikta Sevi, you should live in a secluded place. So it doesn't mean that we run away from everyone, but it means we learn the art of living alone in the crowd. And this is what we learn from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Jagannath Puri. He's living alone. He's relishing something very, very confidential in that kunj, which is known as the Gambira. And he's hearing from Lalita and Vishaka, who are actually, uh, who've come as Srup Damodar and Roy Ramananda. And he's hearing this uh, Brahma Ragit. So this is one of the duties of a disciple. Rupa Goswami, excuse me, uh, Jiva Goswami, in his commentary on Ujjwalila Mani, he quotes Amara Kosh, that the word Samoy, Samoy means an oath, a, a promise, a conclusion, an agreement. And he says the general duties of an initiated disciple, they're called shamoy, or agreement. Uh -huh. And in Hari Bhakti Vilas, uh, Gopal Bhatta Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, they've given a number of important instructions for disciples, for someone who wants to call themselves a disciple. Uh -huh. So mantra no padishta avyo, bhakta avyas cha na sangsadi. Gopaniyam tata shastram rakshaniyam shariravat. Uh -huh. This says that the guru tells a disciple, he gives him a mantra, but he tells him, don't tell this mantra publicly. Mm -hmm. One should always keep that mantra in these uh, confidential shastras, gopaniyam tata shastram. These confidential things, they should keep them secret. Just in the same way, rakshaniyam, that raksha means to protect, shariravat, your body. Just like you protect your body, you should also protect these secret things. Now, it's significant the word gopaniyam is used. 
Uh, Gopaniya means something secret. The word gopi comes from the same beach datu as guha or cave uh, or something secret. The word gopi means literally someone who keeps things very secret. And therefore Uddhava has to go to a secret place to speak to the gopis. And if we want to carry this message of Krishna, even the message of, of Bhagavad Gita, we also have to go to a confidential place. Where Srila Bhaktisiddhanta described in one article, he said that it's not enough to do platform to give platform lectures. When you give a platform lecture in a pandal, there's 10,000 people there, uh, you, what, what are you doing? You're fishing. You're trying to capture one or two souls, bring, give them some interest. Maybe you're giving some general religious principles. You should follow four regulated principles. You should chant the names of God. But you can't go into something very confidential because it's a mixed crowd. And even we can't do that in our Srimad Bhagavatam classes, in our big temples. It's okay. Don't become disturbed by that because the temple has a certain purpose. It's meant to, to facilitate, to train new people. It's not meant for these confidential things. It's like the Jagannath Mandir in Puri. It's organized religion. But we need to have a Gambira. If we want to be able to give this deep message to people, we need to take them, as Uddhava is doing with the gopis, to a secluded secret place and speak something rahasya, which is manas, something deep in the heart, uh -huh. something indirect. Uh -huh. And therefore, Sanatana Goswami in Hari Bhakti Vilas, he speaks elaborately about how the disciple should keep certain things secret. In, again, the second Vilas of Hari Bhakti Vilas, he quotes Samoyan Tantra. I wrote an article. If you're interested to read that, it's in Krishna Katamrita magazine, I think, in issue number 16. Uh -huh. He says, the Samoyan Tantra says, Gopaya Devatam Ishtam. Gopaya, again, the word Gopa. The, you should hide your Devata Ishta, your, your Ishta Dev, uh -huh. your worshipable Lord. Uh -huh. Don't tell that to everyone. Gopaya Guru Matmana. You should hide your Guru Dev. It doesn't mean you deny your Guru, but it means your confidential relationship with him. Don't advertise that. Gopayet Chanijam Mancham, the mantra that you've gotten, you don't speak that to everyone, you keep that hidden. And Gopayet Nijamalikam, you should also hide your Japa Mala. Uh -huh. Therefore, we keep it inside of a bag. Uh -huh. Again, in Hari Bhakti Vilas, it's described Swapne Vakshi Samaksham Va Ascharjam Ati Harshadam Akasma Yadigjayata Na Kyayatavyam Guru Vina. <laughs> If you have a wonderful vision, maybe you hear a voice or you feel Krishna is personally speaking to me. And then that thing is happening. It's us charge. It's a very astonishing thing. It's happening either swapni, vakshi, either in a dream or in a waking state. Don't tell anyone. Once one devotee came to our Guru Maharaj and he said, Guru Maharaj, I was chanting Hare Krishna and I saw Lord Nishringadev. And Guru Maharaj looked both ways and he leaned into him and he said, don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Natan Goswami says, you keep this hidden. Why do you keep this hidden? Uh -huh. Similarly, we, we hide our japa in the, in the, in the 17th Vilas of Hari Bhakti Vilas. When speaking about Jap Japa, says Yaksha Rakshasha Bhutani Siddha Vidya Ganaha Haranti Prasabham Yasnat Tasmad Guptam Samachita. Guptam, again, this word is used. Uh, if you chant your Japa, if you take your beads out of your bag, then some Yakshas, Rakshasas, some ghosts, they may come and take away the result of your Japa. Or to put it in another way, if you start advertising, yeah, you know. I've been chanting 20 rounds a day now. I'm becoming really advanced. Mm -hmm. Or what's being? I chanted 64 rounds on a codice. You're a very generous person. You're giving away the fruits of your japa because that japa, guptam samacha, it should be hidden. Uh -huh. This japa is, there's a verse, uh, Sanatana Goswami gives, we offer a japa. Guyati guya gupta twam. Uh -huh. Again and again he says, guya. Ati Guya Gopta. This is Guya Ati Guya. This is 
Conf this is confidential. It's very confidential. It's gopta. It's something to be hidden. Grihana uh smat kritam japam. This japa is a very, very confidential thing. Siddhar bhavatu me deva twat pasada twayistate. My Lord, please accept this japa, which is such a confidential thing. And may I attain perfection in this. Therefore, Narottam Das Thakur, in his Prem Bhakti Chandrika, he says that, look, if you want to do braj bhajan, we're not talking about bhajan like in Mathura. We're not talking about bhajan like they do in Rome at the Vatican and Christianity or different things, which we give all respect to. Her. But this is not just a public religion. If you want to understand the message of Uddhava, the message of Braj, Narutam Das Thakur says, Apana bhajana kata nakahi be jata tata ihate hoi be sabadam nakari ha ke harosh nalai amore dosh prana maha bhakti racharane hari he. Oh, my dear Lord Hari, huh? he's saying that ah, uh, apana bhajana kata. You should keep your bhajan. Uh -huh. I'm not going to go and tell everybody about it. Here and there. Uh -huh. He says, sabadan. You be careful. Sadhu uh sabadan. -huh. You keep that thing very, very confidential. Uh -huh. And he said, please, Narkori uh Keha -huh. Rosh, don't get angry with me. Rosh, don't, don't get angry with me. Uh -huh. uh, please forgive me. But this is my nam bhajan. And Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur has commented, one should not reveal one's bhajan to others if we disregard this instruction from Narottam Das Thakur and our previous acharyas, then we may fall down permanently. He says, permanently we may fall down from bhakti. Why? Uh -huh. Because uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur has commented on Narottam Das Thakur's song here, and he says that if we speak about our realizations, if we speak about our ecstasy, we speak about some amazing thing that happened to us, just to anyone, he says actually we should only reveal them to Gurudev and the very intimate Antaranga Bhaktas, not to anyone else. If we, but if we disregard that, then it's going to hurt our humility and it's going to damage our bhajan. And we won't be able to practice bhajan in a correct way. And therefore Jiva Goswami, at the end of Bhakti Sandarbha, he says, Atta Chasri Guru, Shri Bhagavato Va Prasada Labdam Sadhana Sadyagatam Sviya Sarvasya Bhutam Yatkim Api Rahasyam Tattuna Kamaschetit Prakashaniyam Yatahaha Naita Parasma Akeyayam Pristat Yapi Katanchana Saravam Sampadyate Devi Deva Guyam Susambritam. He quotes the same verse which we cited a little earlier where Vishnu was telling Aditi that you should keep these things secret. And Jiva Goswami, at the end of Bhakti Sandarbha, he says, Whatever confidential experiences you've gotten, Loved prasada loved it by some mercy you've loved to gotten that thing sadhana sadhigatam you've gotten through your sadhana you, you've gotten the goal of this thing which is given by the mercy of Gurudev that's your treasure and you should keep it hidden don't tell that just to anyone and therefore Kaviraj Goswami in Chaitanya Charitamrita when he speaks about the mercy that Lord Nityananda Prabhu gave him he says, Veda Guya Kata, a Ayogya Kahite. It's not appropriate to speak about this. These are things which even the Vedas, Veda Guya, are very confidential even for the Vedas to speak about the mercy that I've gotten. Because if I speak about it, I may become proud. Even the Bible speaks about this. Jesus, in, in the book of Matthew, he says that when you pray, you should go in the closet. You should go in a, in a hidden room when you pray. Don't just do it in public. And therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began this Premanam Sankirtan behind closed doors. And this Premanam Sankirtan finishes behind closed doors. It began in Srivasanga and it ended in the Gambira. And we also go out in public, 
But that public kirtan is not the same as the private kirtan. We need to have both. In the book of Matthew, in the Bible, it says, Beware of practicing your piety before men in order to be seen by them. He's just showing your piety, so how, how pious I am, so that people will respect me. For if you do that, you'll get no reward from God. Hmm? And he says, therefore, when you give alms, when you give some charity, don't start blowing on a trumpet <laughs> to advertise. Here I am. I'm giving some, some charity, right? <laughs> don't start being on the Murdunga drum. Here, I'm, I'm going to give some charity today. He says, as the hypocrites do in the churches and streets so that they can be praised by people. He says, I say to you, those people who advertise in that way, they don't have any reward. So when you give some charity, you do it with your right hand, but your left hand shouldn't know what your right hand is doing. It should be such a secret thing. And then if you do like that, he says, God, our Father in heaven, he'll reward you. So this is very, very important. We're not speaking about solitude. Rather, we're speaking about inwardness. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference. Uh, I, I'd like to read you a little something which I found very beautiful from Krishna Chaitra Maharaj. He said that uh, uh, these different instructions like we're hearing in the, in the Bhagavatam about confidential things, they're referring to inwardness. And he says people who are no longer interested in the external world cultivate inwardness which leads them to a higher truth about themselves in communion with the Lord of inwardness. But such inwardness is, is real communion. It's actually meeting. It's not isolation. Mm -hmm. It's really meeting. We'll meet with Krishna. We'll meet with Gurudev in that hidden place. And this is why when Uddhava arrives in Vrindavan, the first thing that happens is he takes the gopis and they go to a secret place, a secret kunj, because what we're going to tell you is not appropriate in public. So I've gone much later than we usually go. My apologies. I'd like to request the devotees, uh, if they have any reflections who are online and also maybe here in the room, let me first go over online. I want to welcome Natalia from Estonia. Thank you for taking part today. And Brinda Sundari Hare Krishna from Denver, Colorado. She's commented, sounds good. <laughs> and, uh, our friend Mani Gopal Prabhu offers his pranams from Mayapur. He says, excellent point. Natalia gives a reflection. She says, a brilliant explanation of the process of messaging. I've been studying communication for eight years and, and uh, haven't met I haven't found instructions about the proper use of our mind. Mm -hmm. We just studied that a message should be a message. In other words, you just speak what you've heard. Very nice reflection. Thank you, Natalia. And Brenda Sundry is a very thoughtful person in Denver. She says, I really like this point about digesting the philosophy. In other words, one of the meanings of manas, and we have to reflect on it, bringing into our own lives, continually deepening our understanding. This is what real spiritual life is. It's alive with hearing, digesting, and applying. And, and conversely, to address Brenda Sundari's point, very good point, if we haven't digested this, if we haven't imbibed this in our own life, people feel offended, isn't it? When you just go to someone and you give some theoretical information that you've heard, you know, Prabhu, you shouldn't eat with that hand. You should take your shoes off here. And, and you're just speaking according to some rules. And, and you can see that you don't have empathy for the devotees. You're just speaking this because this is a rule. It's the way it's supposed to be. We feel offended by that. We, we feel disturbed by that. So this message, to carry this message properly, we have to digest it. Hare Krishna Bani, nice to see you from a distant place known as Vermont. And Manu... Uh, Mani Gopal Prabhu goes on. Always appreciate these two points that, that uh, you frequently comment about organized religion and the platform speaker. Mani Gopal Prabhu is a very good preacher in, in uh, Mayapur. Subal Sham Prabhu, nice to see you here today. Sarde Rasa, nice to see you. Uh, Binda Sundari, further comments. I like this conception of japa being confidential. It makes japa a sacred and personal connection with Krishna, like a mantra telephone. Let me tell you something a little confidential about myself. 
uh, I don't mean to be discouraging, but I've always had a problem with these Japa uh, uh, retreats because for me, Japa is something, a very, very confidential thing. But it doesn't mean there's no benefit there. But when we have a Japa retreat and we charge money for people and so many hundreds of people come and you don't even know everybody who's there, it's by definition, it's not going to be so confidential. Now, you can fish. Yeah, that's fishing. You're trying to capture some people and bring them to the more confidential group. Right? So there is a purpose of those Japa seminars. They're important. They're very, very useful. But a real Japa seminar takes place in a very untaranga uh, group with, with like-minded devotees. Natalia goes on and says, the message should be a massage. <laughs> and so the Arasic, uh, ask the question, how do we know which devotees we can share our internal experiences with? Well, I find that, that when you start speaking, you find that out very quick. <laughs> it, that's the art of preaching. That's the art of relationships. When you know what to speak to that particular person at that particular time. I, I, I can talk really good with little kids. With babies, you can ask my wife. I, I, when I go to a baby, the babies love me. And you know what I do? What I tell them? I go and I, and I like, I, I kind of vibrate my finger in their chest and I say, boo, boo. I make a little sound like that. And the babies love it. Now, if I meet a professor of philosophy from Oxford University, I don't speak the same way to him. <laughs> it's not appropriate. So we have to learn the art. And this is an art which we can speak about when you meet a professor, you should say something philosophical. You should, but sometimes maybe the professor likes something silly. That may be a better way to connect with him. You have to be spontaneous. You have to be in touch with your heart. You have to be natural yourself. If you're stiff and formal, how can you speak to someone else? So the first thing to understand someone else, we have to understand ourselves. We have to be natural with our bhajan. And then if we're natural, if we're deep in our bhajan, Krishna will speak to us. My Guru once, I wrote a letter to him from America, actually it was a fax before the time of email, saying, Guru Maharaj, you're coming to America, we're organizing your, your tour here, and I had the idea to attract devotees to come to announce certain topics that you're going to speak on, seminars, whatever, like a popular thing today. And I gave a list of different topics I knew he'd like to talk about, esoteric significance of Jagannath Puri and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and different things he likes to speak on. And Guru Maharaj wrote me back and said a very interesting thing. He said, this is not necessary. He said that I speak according to the devotees in each place. I look at the devotees and I speak what they need in that time. So that's the art of preaching. Uh -huh. And then he went on to say, in any way, I only have one topic that I speak about, and that's Krishna Prem. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Mani Gopal Prabhu also commented, he had the same kind of question as mine. I hope that's helpful. Is anybody here in the room, we're, we're fortunate today, we're, we're live with, with a few wonderful devotees. Does anybody here have any reflections? comments, questions, anything you're walking away with that you like today. I'm sorry we kind of like gave a whole flood of Shastric Pramanas yeah, and yeah. different things. It was oh, a lot to digest. Fakir Mohanbabu once he chastised me, he said, Madhavananda, he's like running and he's not looking back. We're trying to look back also. But our Guru Maharaj, he also once said that if you can't quote Shastra, don't tell them you're my disciple. <laughs> so that's a little scary. <laughs> we want to speak something, we should quote some shash. Does anybody here have any reflections? Anything you want to share? I have a question. Jagadatma Prabhu, let me just move this microphone over here. Uh, I want to get a special camera so that you can see the devotees. Oh, so okay. Please speak a little loud. Okay. So I've had a question for a while, but I didn't ask anybody because I didn't think I can ask them. Uh, anyway, I'd like to ask you uh, that uh, we often hear this thing uh, that Uddhava is a jnani, is mixed, mm -hmm. it's, not a, it's not like the Brajavasis. And uh, Krishna sent him with a message, but that's not the actual reason that he's going there. My understanding was that Krishna sent him there 
so that he can see them uh, because uh, Uddhava he's, he's a big jnani he's a very big jnani and uh, Krishna likes him he's a great devotee as well but he's very much jnani and therefore Krishna sent him there so he can see them and Uddhava failed he's a complete failure this is my understanding he went there to console them and give them a message of love but he can't give any message of love he can't do that he went there and he saw what is love this was my understanding so um, I see everything in this light and, and therefore when I hear about Uddhava I often think uh, yeah but his understanding is not complete mm -hmm. he's not got a complete understanding he's going there and he's he's seeing them and the conclusion was he realized that they have real love he, he's uh, you know his explanation everything like that of course it's all mixed up with so many things you gave Vishwanath Chakrabarti attack or a lot of things and you know I, therefore I, I, I think oh boy that's just making it complicated <laughs> I don't I don't see it as complicated you know so my understanding was that uh, you know Udavas <coughs> is not a completely Brajabasi person he's a Dwakabasi you know which is a lot of Aishvarya he has a lot of Aishvarya you know he really sees Krishna as God they don't see like that at all you know and and he didn't see it at first he's thinking I've come here to instruct them he's thinking he's their guru like an instructor you know, so I mean, how can he understand? Uh, he, he, he's not surrendering. He's really puffed up person. That's the way I see it. Mm. I see he's not humble at all. You know, he's thinking he's their instructor. So my question is, you know, did I understand it wrongly? <laughs> you know, I, when I heard this thing, I always thought he's a me, he's, you know, he's some heavy jnani, he's Brihaspati, you know, Shishya, you know. Can come? Yes, please. Well, <laughs> things are simple for us when we have love. But at the same time, things are complicated, even when we talk about love. Uh, and therefore we have a big book, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, we have, and that, that book's not enough even to describe all the types of love, that is Ujjalila Mani also. Because it's complicated because different devotees have different perspectives. And what you're <coughs> expressing is correct, and we would certainly agree with it. But there's also other perspectives too. I would suggest that perhaps your conception that you're speaking about how Uddhava is a Gyani Bhakta and how he practically he's being offensive to try to come and preach like this. This is a perspective of Nandan Yashoda. This is a perspective of the Gopikas of Braj. Mm -hmm. But there's other perspectives also. Jiva Goswami, in his commentary on Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, he gives an interesting name for Uddhava. One of Uddhava's names is Pavana Vyadi. Pavana Vyadi. Pavana, pavana means the wind. Pavana means uh, Pavana Vyadi means somebody who's mad. Somebody who has Krishna Prem from their childhood. And the Bhagavatam also describes that Uddhava from his childhood was playing with dolls and was very, very much attracted to Krishna. And Jiva Goswami and Gopal Champu speaks about the ecstatic, loving meeting the first time that Krishna met with Uddhava. This is from another perspective. It, it doesn't doesn't discount what you're saying, yes. but it's another perspective. He has some love, therefore he's pavanavyadi. He, he's mad. He's a, he's a mad person, and that's why Krishna sent him. But his love is on the platform of matura. 
He's coming from Mattara and it's mixed, as you pointed out, with this Gyan and Aishvarya. So to bring him to a higher platform, Krishna sent him. Now, to look ahead in the history of events which took place after this, this uh, Brahma Ragit was spoken in the 47th chapter of the, of the 10th canto, it's not really complete until Gora Lila in the Gambira. And so we see there is some purpose there that Uddhava, in coming and speaking like this, he churns the hearts of the gopis. And this is a purpose that Krishna has, which Vishnu Chakrabarti Thakur mentions in one place. He says that if Krishna loves the, the bridge bhasis, and in particular the gopis, more than anyone else, how can we accept that it's true that he left them? It's not true. He must love the, the Mathura bhasis more, and he really loves the Dwarka bhasis more because he lives with them. And Vishnu says, no, if you think like that, it's wrong. And he says, just as a goldsmith heats gold with fire to prove the purity, to melt the gold and prove the purity of that gold, so in the same way Krishna applied the fire, known as Vipralamba Agni, to the hearts of the gopis to show and prove their glories. And this is how, it's a very, I'm going off the deep end a little bit, excuse me, this is how Krishna repays his debt to the gopis. And that, the, that love of the gopis is not understood, it's not really heard about until the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And here in the Gambira, it's not really revealed, even in Mayapur and Nabadweep, or even when Mahaprabhu went to Vrindavan, but it's revealed in Jagannath Puri in the Gambira, when he's experiencing the same mood the gopis had with meeting with Uddhava. So Krishna's purposes were multifarious, as you pointed out. He wanted to bring Uddhava to a higher platform. And from one perspective, what Uddhava is saying is complete nonsense. <laughs> Practically, it's offensive. He's trying to preach to them. <laughs> well, he's a Brihaspati That's, that's the way the gopis are thinking. And we should also understand the mood of the gopis. But simultaneously, other things are also happening. And Krishna is churning their hearts by, by sending Uddhava with this message. And what is Uddhava's message that he gives to Nanda? We, we've already heard about his message to Nanda and Yashoda. He starts thinking, I have to bring them to a more philosophical platform. Philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> Speculative. Krishna, Krishna Kohn has some reflection. Why don't you come here and talk into the little ball here? That's good. Thank you. Krishna. Speak loud, Krishna. Thank you so much. Uh, what I got from this beautiful kata today is that Krishna is so kind <laughs> because he's not seeing Uddhava's pride. Of course, that's, we know that wa that's one of his reasons to send... Uddhava's pride. Yeah, he's not seeing Uddhava's pride. He's seeing his madness after him from childhood, even if it's according to re rules of deity worship that he was <laughs> doing Uddhava in the beginning. And I was just considering this, that this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is because Krishna is so kind that he doesn't look at any Uttamadama Kichuna Bachila. He doesn't consider any disqualification. That disqualification becomes our only qualification, as Agude would say. He doesn't see that. He doesn't that's not what he's paying attention to. But he's giving opportunity mm. to everybody to come to that platform of the Gopi's highest hidden mm. love. And that's beautiful. So how does Krishna do that? How is he doing that with Uddhava? He's smashing the pride of Uddhava. <laughs> yeah. And when Krishna smashes yes. our pride, that's mercy. Then, then our disqualification becomes our only qualification, as our Guru Maharaj used to say. But before that, then we think that my qualification is my only qualification. <laughs> I'm such a good kirtan leader that I know so many verses, I know this and that. But when Krishna would really get mercy and we become smashed, and then we become humble, then that humility is our qualification. Turn out a piece in Yes, thank you for adding that. And uh, a point about how disqualified we are. Hari Bhaktivilas, I was delighted with this quote that we should protect our, our bhajan and our uh, mantra, especially. 
protect these like you protect your body. And it reminded me of that verse from Srimad Bhagavatam which says that one should take care of the deity of Krishna the way we take care of our body. Why is that comparison given? Mm-hmm. Because we are completely in body consciousness. <laughs> we are completely... <laughs> we really think that we are the body. Mm-hmm. So Krishna is really very kind to give us such approachable, you know, like Shukadeva was telling me, he's giving us such approachable things, like he's not giving us something that we cannot do. He's giving us something which we are able to do at this point, and that's, mm-hmm. that's just really touched my heart. And uh, one more thing that really caught my attention was manas. Uh, one meaning of manas was to breathe. Thank you very much for that <laughs> beautiful, <laughs> an adi- uh, beautiful description about m- uh, why this vamanas, uh, why the message has to be carried in the heart, in the mind. That was such a beautiful description with all the different meanings of manas. Thank you. Breathing, wha- one of the meanings that, that uh, the Amarakush dictionary gave was manas means to breathe which means breathing is something fluid, it's not rules. It's something that you go with the flow <laughs> of the air, uh, just as you, you swim in the waves of devotion. And, and one, the yes, <laughs> you cannot do it when you are only relying on the externals and on the rules. And I just, I just remember Very that. Nice. So just, okay, thank so you. I need to what she's just saying, that, that manas means, one of the meanings of manas is air, or to breathe, means breathing, that life. And one of the meanings of, of Uddhav, one of the names of Uddhav is Pavanavyadi. He's, he's mad because of this air. That's real breathing. That's, yeah, that's we'll manas. The two have a connection that way. Okay, anybody else here? Tukaram Prabhu, do you have any reflections? I have you the secret ball here. Hare Krishna Prabhu. I like to point out when Prabhupada went to America. So he first chanted and then attracted the attention of everyone. And similarly, like uh, Hanuman, when he went to Lanka, he first chanted Lord Ramchandra's name. Because chanting first awakens our consciousness, our soul, and then we'll be able to grasp the message of Krishna. So that yes. I, that point I like. I, I feel it's very very important that we understand the purpose of the temples. Otherwise, we become discouraged. It, we may we may expect too much, and then the, the temples everything. If you think it's everything, you got a problem. The, the, my grandma said the temple. That's like that's like kindergarten. He said like that. That's a school that you go to. And kindergarten is very important. But we should graduate from school. And we, we should go on. And then, then we go on a higher place and we associate with like-minded devotees. And of course, someone may graduate and they may continue to, with the school as a teacher. Or they may continue as an administrator with the school. That's also there. And, and, and some Vaishnavas do that. But in general, it's a difficult place. It's not a place we should expect great intimacy because it's a place for, for preaching to new people. Hmm? Okay? Pranjacharya Prabhu, what, what do you think about all this today? <laughs> it's okay? <laughs> Or very, I'm really glad you came to the Prabhuji. Prabhuji, you have any reflection? Anything? Why don't you come up here? Thank you very much, Prabhuji. And uh, I like uh, how Bibli and how school is studying the scriptures and uh, describe it to the others and us. And I like the point that uh, the confidence and knowledge should be kept secret, then uh, that will be uh, successful. And uh, uh, I uh, uh, study in scripture that uh, when a guru uh, teaches his uh, uh, students, uh, then uh, he should be uh, kept, uh, keep uh, the knowledge of scriptures confidential to the students according to their uh, growth in spiritual according to their advancement advancement in spiritual life and uh, that's the uh, duty of guru to keep the uh, scriptures knowledge of scriptures confidential and uh, i like the point how we uh, should uh, we keep our uh, japa mala and bead japa beads uh, secretly in a bag mm-hmm. and uh, and my question is uh, like close to now. yes, and, and my question is uh, uh, according to uh, Narottam Das Thakur, uh, we should keep our uh, sadhana, our bhajan, uh, uh, secret, and we should not we should not reveal it to others and to juniors, other devotees also. 
and my and uh, bisna chakravarti thakur also repeated it in his commentary that uh, if we reveal to others we may fall down permanently uh, so my question is should we reveal our uh, depth of our bhajan or chanting rounds to our guru and senior devotees well first of all you 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 ask two questions should we reveal our confidential things to senior devotees when you say senior devotee that means why that someone because of a number of years they've been there uh, and that that indicates it's not something confidential it's just something formal something institutional all oh, this guy he's a hundred years old so I should definitely talk to him <laughs> but there may be someone who's only 16 years old who's better and that 16 year olds may be Sukadev Goswami <laughs> you can speak with that person so we have to it's a question of the heart and this again is the art of living it's a real art of living people talk about the art of living but this is the real art of living to know who to speak to to know who to reveal our heart to and yes we should reveal this to our Guru Dev but then someone may I think inherent maybe in your question is the, the feeling the idea that well maybe I don't maybe I don't feel so close to my Gurudev well let me say something really blunt we may have different gurus my Guru Maharaj was asked once who is more prominent the Diksha Guru or the Siksha Guru and he gave such a beautiful answer he said whoever occupies your heart so Guru is that personality who's Guya Makyati Prichidi who's giving us this Guyam and that we feel confidence to go and speak with him He's not just mantra data guru or kona funka guru who's spitting in our ear, as is saying in Uriya, someone who's just giving us mantra just officially, but it's someone that I have faith in. And if you don't have faith in guru, then that person, how is he really your guru? He's kona funka guru. He, he, he's mantra data guru. He's giving you mantra. That's good. He's your official guru. But we all need to find someone that we can reveal our heart to. Okay, so I want to stop there. We've gone really late today. Uh -huh. So I want to thank everybody very much for taking part. So we want to do this every Tuesday, Indian time, from generally from 7 to 8. We went really late today. Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Samabeda Bhakta Binda Ki Jai, Goprema Nandi Hari Hari Bo, Vancha Kalpa Dhrubish